Hey guys, welcome back. RuneScape's newest area expansion is so massive that they are releasing it in two parts. In this overview, you're going to learn everything you need to know about Varlamore Part 1 and the exciting content that comes with it. There's a ton of content to go over, so let's get into it. The Kingdom of Varlamore, home to the capital of Civitas Illafortis, located south of the Kingdom of Corin, will be coming to Old School RuneScape on March 20th. In order to be ready for Varlamor, I figured it would be a good time to brush up on my knowledge and I started digging through the RuneScape news posts to learn everything I could about what we should expect with the first part of Varlamor. First off, to begin entry into the new expansion that is Varlamor, you will want to make sure that you have completed the quest Children of the Sun, so make sure to have it completed before all of the action starts. Within Varlamor, you will find multiple areas of interest. Here are the three major areas that I think you should know. The first one is Civitas Illafortis, that you may have heard me horribly pronounce earlier in this video. This is the kingdom of Varlamor's capital, home to the Fortis Coliseum, which is RuneScape's new wave-based minigame. But I'll make sure to cover more about that a little bit later in this video. Another area of interest is the Avium Savannah, located just on the outside of the capital city's walls. You will find the Hunter's Guild, new hunter creatures, and the Colossal Worm Remains, a new agility activity. Unfortunately, this agility activity will not be released on March 20th, instead it will be released with Varlamor Part 2 later this year. Our third area of interest are the Jagged Cliffs of Rallo's Rise, where you'll find a dwarven town named Cam Torum. In the depths of the mountain lie a new mid-game PVM activity called Perilous Moons, which will require completion of the Perilous Moons quest to access the dwarven town and the PVM activity. We're going to go into each of those three major areas and break down some of the things that we can look forward to with the Part 1 expansion release. Up first, we head to Civitas Illafortis to check out the Fortis Coliseum. The Fortis Coliseum is a new wave-based minigame where players will have the option after each wave to either leave with their obtained loot or risk it all for more rewards. In between each wave, players will have to choose between modifiers that strengthen their enemies and continue to increase the difficulty of the challenge. Should you make it through the Coliseum to the end, you'll have a chance to obtain some brand new gear. The Fortis Coliseum will introduce an upgrade to the Ava's Assembler called Dizana's Quiver, an untradeable but chargeable and corruptible cape slot that can hold up to two types of ammo. The Glaive of Ralos, a one-handed chargeable throwing weapon that will bounce back after each hit, and a new set of prayer gear similar to Prosely called the Sunfire Fanatic Armor, which will take the new Sunfire Splinters to charge and an all new rune type called Sunfire Runes. And when used, they will increase the spell's minimum hit by 10%. Moving over to the Avium Savannah, we have the all new Hunter Guild, which requires just 4,600 to access and will have an activity similar to farming contracts or slayer tasks called Hunter's Rumors, which will send you out into Givenor searching for specific hunter creatures. Completing these Hunter's Rumors will not only give you Hunter XP, but you will also have a chance to receive the Quetzal Pet, the Quetzal Whistle, and the all-new Hunter Skilling Outfit, which will help increase your catch rate success. The Hunter's Guild will even bring about some new Hunter gear known as Mixed Hide Gear, requiring 50 defense and 60 range to use, the new Hunter's Spear, and the Sunlight Hunter's Crossbow. The Hunter Guild is also home to the Quetzal Transportation Network. Players will receive a Quetzal Whistle, which will allow swift flight back to the guild from anywhere in Gilinor, except the Wilderness, of course. There are three tiers to the Quetzal Whistle, Basic, Enhanced, and Perfected, each tier having an increase in the amount of charges available on the Whistle. Players will also have the option to customize the Quetzal that comes to pick them up. The Avium Savannah is also home to the new hunter creatures running about Gibbonor. You'll find new moths that will help boost players' stats known as the Sunlight and the Moonlight moths, as well as the Sunlight and Moonlight antelopes, whose horns will be used in upgrading the already existing Hunter's Crossbow into the Sunlight Hunter's Crossbow. There is even a new type of salamander called the Mountain Salamander, which will require 79 hunter to catch and require 80 attack, ranged, and magic to wield. Those are just some of the creatures you will find in Varlamar. Moving over to Ralo's Rise, we have the Dwarven City of Camtorum. Players will have to complete the Perilous Moons quest to adventure in these parts. 
After completion of the Perilous Moons quest, players will unlock a new mid-level PVM activity called Perilous Moons. Described as a mix between the Barrows Brother and the Fourth O's Dungeon, players will discover and explore ancient temples beneath the surface. Level 75 combat is recommended with an emphasis on defense. Players will fight enemies, cross shortcuts, and tackle various skilling activities to reach the three demi-bosses. Kill all three and you have a chance at the best loot. Perilous Moons will introduce three new sets of armor into RuneScape. The Blood Rager set, the Frost Moon set, and the Eclipse set. The Blood Rager set has dual Makuhitos that have a 4 tick attack speed and hit twice while the armor set effect has a 33% chance for the dual Makuhitos second attack to hit 1 tick sooner. The Frost Moon set is a melee and magic set focused on strong magic accuracy with defensive capabilities against magic and crush styles. The Spell Spear is a melee weapon that hits hard while allowing the player to auto cast whatever spells they would like with a 5% increase to magic strength. The armor set effect has a 10% chance for the next melee attack to go unaffected by any action delay. Then we have the Eclipse set focused on ranged accuracy and melee strength. The Eclipse at Atletal is a new ranged weapon with attack speed of 4 ticks or 3 ticks on rapid. Damage for this weapon is also based off of melee strength. This set brings about a damage over time effect in burn damage. While wearing the full set, the player will have a 20% chance to inflict burn that causes the target to suffer 1 point of damage every 4 ticks for 40 ticks. This effect can be stacked up to 5 times. We have covered a ton of content and all of this is releasing with the first part of Volumore on March 20th. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview and there are more details available on the official RuneScape news post and I'll make sure to link it in the comment section down below. This is just the first half and I'm sure we'll be back covering everything there is to know about part 2 later this year. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for Volumore and I can't wait to see everyone exploring all the content that it will have to offer. Until next time. See you guys later.